Hello, everyone. Welcome to the session of cell death and uh, aging. And this is, of course, a perennial question. It's the uh, many aspect, the other side of cardiovascular disease. We have two great leaders in the field, and Dr. Hauser and uh, um, Dr. Kisses, for us to lay out what it, we have for this uh, symposium about this uh, particular session. So talk about cell death. Um, this is an old problem, but with many new nuance. And Dr. Kisses, what is the new development in the cell death regulation, and, and what do you see from uh, the, the field, um, what is the uh, most uh, interesting questions right now? Well, it's very interesting how this has evolved over the past 30 years or so. Uh, at one point, nobody thought regulated cell death even existed, except in developmental situations where certain cells died at the same time in the same place during embryogenesis. But now it's become clear that there are many different types of cell death, some of it being highly regulated, not just apoptosis, but many non-apoptotic forms of cell death like necrosis and necroptosis and ferroptosis, and many of them play roles in disease. So because they're the, at the basis of many of the core cardiac diseases, like myocardial infarction and a component of heart failure, we want to understand what role they're playing in those diseases. Clearly, what are the other things we learned about the pathogenesis of the cell deaths, and that's something that Dr. Hauser, you are going to talk about, isn't it? So much of what we're doing in my group now and many other groups around the world is studying how pathological stress can exacerbate the cell death signaling that's normally very rep repressed in cardiac myocytes so that we learn why cardiac cells die in disease states, hopefully reduce the rate of cell death. And then the other part of what many of us are working on, if we don't present, prevent cell death and it actually happens, how can we repair the myocardium more efficiently and effectively after parts of the heart muscle have actually died? From both of you, I thought one of the very interesting questions is after understanding the mechanism a lot better, what do you see the potential to target cell death as a potential therapeutic approach to actually either prevent or even reverse the disease progression? So it's an interesting question. Um, in heart failure, cell death is not the whole story. There are many things that are going wrong with the myocardium. Normal cells, there are cells that are not functioning well but are still alive, and then there are cells, there's been the loss of cells through attrition. So there it's a very difficult uh, situation to know how much altering the cell death is going to make a difference. And another issue is if you could not target the cell death specifically to the heart, there's a possibility that wholesale inhibition of cell death throughout the body could cause cancer. During myocardial infarction, it's a little more clear. There's a very circumspect period of time during which cells are dying of different forms of cell death. And the thinking is that if that could be stemmed, although that may be too cataclysmic to get a handle on, but if it could be stemmed, keeping that myocardium around would remove the major impetus to pathological remodeling and the eventual development of heart failure, which is the thing that correlates with mortality. So I, I think both, both targets are interesting. Myocardial infarction may be more approachable to begin with, uh, and there may be different mechanisms involved in the different syndromes. So Dr. Hauser, you actually mentioned a very interesting question about the balance between regeneration and cell death. And what do you see about the cell death regulation also involving cell renewal, and especially in terms of the stem cells? And do you think they have related uh, um, mechanisms or connections functionally? So I think at this conference we'll hear about many different types of potential therapeutics that can potentially repair the heart. Stem cells will be one of those, or stem cell products such as exosomes, which I think we're going to hear a lot about uh, exosome-based therapeutics. And of course, as scientists, we're all trying to figure out what they do. Is, is it something that can benefit a heart that's been damaged? And then how do they work? We were all hoping for the holy grail of cardiac repair, which was cardiac regeneration. And that's turned out to be much more difficult to induce than we initially thought. 
it, it appears that m most of what's happening with stem cell therapy is related to their paracrine effects, where they manipulate the local environment. They actually seem to reduce cell death somehow of the, especially after MI in the infarct border zone, and they somehow enhance repair, potentially by modulating the immune response. So I think we're learning a lot about how cell therapy and cell-based therapies are, are working. Hopefully, we'll, as we learn more, we'll be able to use that information to do things that can help patients who have suffered from a myocardial infarction. That was actually also one aspect of my question. Um, that is, the stem cells that do not survive in the injured heart upon either therapeutic uh, uh, um, injection or the endogenous stem cells, uh, would you think that those cells can be the target of manipulation to promote their survival as a way to enhance their regenerative capacity? Because clearly the, the stem cell viability has been a really limiting step for them to become new myocytes. At least that's part of the uh, concepts. What do you think on that? So I think we still need to learn if and how stem cells that are resident to the myocardium become new myocytes. It, it appears that in vitro and in vivo, you can have a s very slow rate of new myocyte formation. Where those myocytes come from uh, is still not entirely clear, at least to me. Uh, there's some data that suggests that we can get a few new myocytes from cardiac stem cells, and a few new myocytes appear to come from existing cardiac myocytes, which is a real puzzle since myocytes exit from the cell cycle. Uh, I think we're going to hear about a lot of that science at, at this conference, and hopefully it will stimulate our bright young fellows to go and do all the new experiments that we need in order to figure out how it works. MI kills pretty much everything. It kills the vasculature, it kills the myocytes, it kills the fibroblasts, and it kills the, it kills the stem cells that live within that region. So. How can we repopulate the heart with the proper cells and in the proper way to regenerate that tissue that still remains, I think, a major goal of what we're all trying to do. Another layer of the onion is uh, if there's any theme that runs through science uh, in the last 20, 30 years is that proteins have multiple functions. And sometimes we're not even studying the most important function of what the protein is. So take cast bases, which are central to cell death, well, they seem to be also essential to differentiation of, for example, ES cells, or even somatic cells like skeletal myotubes to myocytes. So it's possible that some of this complexity may have to do with their cell death functions, and some of it may have to do with other functions. So it's not even completely clear, I, I think, what we want to do with stem cells in terms of manipulating some of these proteins. That, that's actually also uh, one question that I found very fascinating is that in the, for instance, in the necrotic cell death pathway and from a totally original thinking of unregulated process now turn out to be highly regulated. And from cases, what do you think about in the current date of uh, uh, research, what do you think about the potential breakthroughs and what kind of a directions that actually the field is taking the shape that help us to advance this field uh, further? So the general cell death field has been very fixated on necroptosis uh, for the last uh, 10 years or so. And I think that may be very important in terms of ridding cells of invading organisms, in terms of innate immunity. It's become unclear how important it is in disease. Although many of the inhibitors of necroptosis, such as necrostatin, definitely do things like make infarcts and strokes smaller. The question is how specific are they for this form of cell death as opposed to spilling over into other forms of cell death. For example, ferroptosis would be the main one. So it's still not even entirely clear what the roles of different forms of cell death are in different diseases. But I think the major recognition has been that one can't just focus on apoptotic cell death as being the be-all and end-all, especially in cardiac diseases like MI, where it's almost certainly the acute injury is almost certainly non-apoptotic cell death. And maybe the remodeling has a large component of apoptosis. So part of this is classification, and part of it is really understanding the mechanisms. 
sounds like a, this is the same issues in the science where you have faced this old problem, which actually have been at the beginning or the origin of heart failure and uh, the root of the heart failure. But at the same time, as the science progress, we always find the nuance. So we always find the novel mechanisms and with a better understanding of the disease uh, to, uh, to actually advance our potential therapeutic approaches. And clearly that's why I think people should come to BCVS and uh, to hear all those advances. And uh, I'm clearly, this is only the beginnings, the first and second days of the program. And I'm sure there are gonna be more exciting new findings to be reported.